Great, so again, uh, yes, I, we would like to, first of all, uh, my name is uh, Tony Griswold and um, I'm a member of a new local uh, community advocacy organization called Project Connection. Um, and we are very, very happy to be working uh, together uh, with Mothers Out Front. And we actually have a presenter from Mothers Out Front today. Um, and Renee Latau Schultz, who is standing right there, has really been a, we've worked, we've been glued to each other. Uh, fortunately, her husband's a very forgiving man. Um, and we've had a lot of our team offer a lot of support. So I guess the, the question is, is this is very personal for everyone, so why am I doing this? Um, I'm doing this uh, because, you know, really when we look at the bigger picture with the way infrastructure is, is approached in this country, uh, you know, we know oil is now more of a renewable resource, meaning it's always being, you know, put together. And it just seems like we're taking a very hackneyed approach to infrastructure projects in general, and particularly with communities. Because when we look at what's happening in North Dakota with Standing Rock, it's not only the native population there that's being affected, there have been many, many private homeowners and landowners across these four states who have said, look, we don't want this, but guess what, it's been futile. So they just keep moving the machine forward to do that. The second reason I'm here today and uh, just, you know, committed to doing this work uh, to bring us all together, we have very two close friends, uh, Lisa Judici and Luke Watlett, who are part of Project Connection. They're local Rochester residents. Both are self-employed as a massage therapist and psychotherapist. They stopped their schedules, right, so there's no income coming in for them. They've been out in Standing Rock for over a week. Uh, we talk to them daily. Um, they've really been through a lot, adrenaline-wise. You know, now, as I was sharing with some of you, the camps are under a tremendous amount of stress uh, because there are more and more people coming in. It's getting very cold there. Uh, there's lack of firewood. There's lack, you know, the bathrooms aren't working. There's a lot of infrastructure-related issues. So we do have some tables set up here. So any donations, uh, feel free to uh, bring, and we will organize them and ship them or drive them out to there. So again, welcome. Um, and what we'll be doing is we'll be having a few presentations with the purpose being not to politicize but to really educate everyone on also how this is affecting our own state. Uh, then we will have a uh, short prayer in unison with the other rallies happening across the country today and there are hundreds of them. Uh, and then we'll do some chanting uh, and then we'll also have an open mic for anyone who would like to get up and share a, a few words. So, so with that being said, um, and so we have Mary and Linda are here. So let's see. Okay, so Linda, would you like to come up? So I'm Linda Isaacson Fideli, and I'm here today representing Mothers Out Front's Bach and Oil Train team. I am with you today, as we are all with the Standing Rock Sioux and other Native tribes who are securing the safety of the land and water in North and South Dakota. We stand with the protesters and with the many others who are trying on so many fronts to stop the growing beast of fossil fuel infrastructure taking hold of our country. Here in New York State, we are facing the Spectra high pressure gas pipeline set to go right by the Indian Point nuclear reactor. We are facing Dominion's three gas compressors set to be located in residential neighborhoods in the southern tier. We are facing tar sands oil transported from the devastated extraction landscapes in Canada to our region where the Pilgrim Pipeline will carry it under the Hudson River from Albany to New Jersey. Even closer to home, we are facing Texas-based Crestwood Equity Partners plan to expand a liquefied gas storage facility in unstable salt caverns right next to Seneca Lake. And right in our own literal backyards, we are facing the Bakken oil trains. The same Bakken oil trains that destroyed the town of Lac Megantique in Quebec in 2013. And just this past June caused evacuations in Mosier, Oregon. These same trains passed by 63 schools in the city of Rochester and Monroe County. They endanger us and they endanger our children. They endanger our neighborhoods. 
and because they also go by Lake Erie and Lake Ontario and cross the Genesee River, they endanger our drinking water and all the life supported by this abundant upstate fresh water. These are the many tentacles of this growing fossil fuel beast. The beast affects so many communities who effectively have no say in their own destruction. And this all plays out right under the nightmarish backdrop of climate change. The crisis demands that we stop burning fossil fuels yesterday. We must stop this beast and transition to renewable energy. Yet, we may soon be locked into fossil fuels by this growing beastly in infrastructure, these tentacles. I sometimes feel hopeless and tired, and I want to stick my head in the sand and enjoy life for today. There is so much to do, and sometimes it's not clear what to do. For example, some say that stopping the Bakken oil trains will simply create greater demand for pipelines, but this is the tentacle that it's, that's in our backyard, a part of the beast. What Mothers Out Front knows is that there is no one silver bullet to the heart that will kill this beast immediately. No, as a nation of concerned citizens, we must simultaneously attack each of its tentacles, pipelines, compressor stations, storage facilities, Bakken oil trains, each brave individual and community must stand up and say no to the particular tentacle or tentacles that threaten it. For example, the Seneca Lake defenders fighting the storage project on Seneca Lake have committed to nonviolent direct action at the project site and since 2014 have achieved over 600 arrests by 400 different individuals and are lauded nationwide as one of the largest and most savvy resistant move, resistance movements. This gives me great hope. Here's what you can do today. Sign our Mothers Out Front petition asking our New York State Senators and Representatives to ban the Bakken oil trains in upstate New York. There are clipboards on the table. If you haven't signed yet, please, please do. And if you think you're up for something larger than just a signature on a petition, and if you live in the city of Rochester or a surrounding town through which the railroad tracks pass, please let us know by signing the petition and saying, I want to get involved and giving your phone number and email address. Let us know if you want to help us talk to your municipal officials, asking them to sign our letter to Congress asking for a ban of the Bakken oil trains in upstate New York. Thank you all for being here, and thank you to the Standing Rock Sioux and all of the Native and non-Native protesters. We stand with you. I believe we're all here because we understand that water is more sacred than corporations. And We don't need this oil. There are cars made right now, as in 2013, that get 300 miles to the gallon. And we have perfectly viable electric cars made by Tesla and other companies. The oil is not necessary, we don't need it. We have the technology to build solar ovens. We have so much available that we don't know about because it is suppressed by the Rockefeller spin-off companies, such as Exxon, the British Petroleum. So, uh, next, uh, Mary Lupin is going to share a few words with us and maybe you can introduce yourself when you come up much better than I could now, thanks. My name is Mary Lupian, and I'm a mother and a stepmother of two five-year-old little girls, and I'm a member of Mothers Out Front. When I look at them, I see the urgency that we must all have 
to respond to the climate crisis. I've been following the events at Standing Rock with shock and horror. My daughter watched over my shoulder as I viewed the video of the protesters peacefully chanting, water is life, only to be attacked by vicious dogs. She asked me, why are they doing this, mommy? And I struggled with my response. I wanted to say, because of power and money and greed and fear of change. But how do I explain that to a five-year-old? Then when I heard about the Army Corps of Engineers retracting their permission to dig on native land, I was so excited. Yeah. I shared my victory on Facebook page. I said, we won. The power of the people works, I posted. And I wondered if this rally would still need to happen today. But as the days went on, I saw more and more posts about why we need to keep the pressure on, but I didn't really understand why. And after digging deeper, I realized that this is not a victory. This is a tactic. If you read the wording of the press release, what is promised to the Native people? It's not a stop to the pipeline, but it's a pause for consideration, for discussion. But because this announcement will be perceived as a victory, the movement could be dispersed. The public spotlight will move on to the next big thing, and we will get distracted again. And the Native people's encampment that began on April 1st at Standing Rock becomes invisible once again. The first people of our earth, the first people and our earth, demand our undivided attention. We must not be fooled by the tactics of the opposition. We must be strong and we must be smart. We must continue to call on Obama to put an end to the Dakota Access Pipeline once and for all. And let's not stop there. We must call for an end to all investment in the oil and gas infrastructure. That same oil from North Dakota that they want to run through those pipelines also runs right through the downtown of Rochester. And these trains are carrying explosive crude oil from the Bakken Shale deposit in North Dakota. They pose an enormous risk to our community and others along the route to Albany on the way to the refinery. Mothers Out Front is mobilizing mothers across the street to ask for a federal ban on this oil transport. And as Linda mentioned, there are petitions that you can sign over on the table to add your name to the letter that we are sending to Congress. We must also put a stop to the Algonquin Extension Pipeline that is going on in the southern tier. And our mothers are organizing there to require public comment hearings so that their voices can be heard loud and clear. Those gathered at Sandy Rock acknowledge the connections between our actions and their effect on our planet home and the connections between all of us. And we thank them, thanks to all the brave men and women and children who are standing up and putting their lives on the line for all of us. Now it's our turn to step up and do our part. Sign the petitions that are linked to the Facebook page in support of President Obama stopping the pipeline. And you can all get out your phone right now and go to standingrock.org and click the PayPal donate button because they need our support, they need our money, and they need our love. So thank you.